Uh, well, good morning everyone. Kay here on the homestead. I'm just getting ready to head to the garden and I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you because I don't know if you go through this in August, but you know, I always, I'm always thinking, okay, if once I get the garden planted, I can kind of kick back and, you know, organize my kitchen and get ready for the whole preserving food thing. <laughs> but that didn't happen. So it, it's just like I went from planting to now there's all this stuff in there that I've got to deal with. And um, unfortunately, I keep, I keep, you know, one of, one of the things I kept hoping uh, being here was that I could have a, and, and many people have asked me this question. Uh, they asked me, uh, what are you gonna do with all that produce? Well, it's just amazing, you know, I'm growing organic and, and um, heirloom seeds. So uh, there's a lot of problems and nothing looks perfect. And you know how people are. They'd rather go to Walmart and pick out a perfect looking ear of corn than to buy an imperfect ear of corn. Well, you don't even know if it's imperfect until you buy it, until you, until you shuck it. And many of these corns have missing kernels I don't know why we've had so much rain and wind, you would think every single kernel on those cobs would be pollinated. Did you know? I'm sure you do. But if you didn't know, I, when I first found this out, I, it blew my mind that every one of the corn silks attaches to a kernel on that cob. And if you have missing kernels, it's because that silk, remember how all the silks come up? That silk did not receive a, a piece of pollen from the tassels, which can come from, you know, nearby stalks of corn, or it's the corn, the one corn itself, it can come down. But you really need 16 corns to, to really have good pollination. And in California, there was no rain all summer. So I made a practice of walking through, <laughs> well, I didn't grow that much corn. <laughs> My first corn was in a raised bed that was four by eight, okay? So what is that? Uh, let's see, four. Let's see, <laughs> wait. Eight, 16, 24. No, it couldn't be that many. Um, I didn't have 30, 32 stalks in that, but that, that was my, and I have a video on that. I can put it up there. You can see my first big, and, and you know, and, and then I grew it in a larger raised bed and then uh, that got all full with stuff. And so I, the, you know, the following years, I was, I was growing corn in pots on my driveway, stringing 16 cloth pots together. That did not go well. You can do it, but it didn't go that well. I gotta say. <laughs> but I made a practice of walking through the corn like every day and shaking those tassels and making sure those kernels were pollinated. Well, I didn't do that down there because we've had so much rain. Rain and wind do, do the work for you. And so now when I'm, like for example yesterday, I peeled five corns. I said, I'm gonna have five years of corn for dinner. You know, it's by the time I get in there, it's 7.30. And between 7.30 and 8, by the time I get in there. And so, and I want to be like getting ready for bed at 8.30. <laughs> that does not leave a lot of time for making a meal. So what I do is I have my big meal in the, in the middle of the day when it's so hot. Then, you know, I exhaust myself in the morning and then I go and have my big meal and so I just eat something light for dinner, something easy. And now that I've got corn coming in, I have corn coming in. I, that's just like incredible to me I, because that never happens. And, you know, I've been through three stands of corn. Let's see, wait, one, two, this is the third stand of corn. And, and this is the first one I've, I've gotten to eat any much of anything. So, this the first stand of corn I, I was able to put 
21, I think it was, tw yeah, 21 ears of corn, whole ears of corn that looked pretty good in the freezer. I just put them straight in the free. I shucked them and put them straight into the freezer. Uh, but the corn that I'm getting now, I want to cut off the cob and I want to freeze. And so yesterday I took uh, a, it was a five gallon bucket and it was stuffed full. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take this much out because if you wait too long, it's pasty. You know, you've got to get it exactly the right time for it to be juicy. I shucked those five corns. And out of the five, there was one that was completely immature. And they were all the same size. I didn't expect that at all. And it was dried up. That just went into the compost. So now I'm down to four. And out of those four, one was perfect. It had almost every kernel pollinated. And which it's it's still just amazing to me. I mean, you, this little piece of dust pollen falls on a and all these silks are just coming out real tight like that but if they get touched by that pollen I guess the there's a chemical reaction that goes down the shaft of that little silk and touches that that cob and makes that kernel it, it's it, nature is just mind-blowing really when you think about it the, the functions of the human body I mean I could talk all day and I only steamed them for three minutes. I had boiling water in a um, steam pot, dropped the four in, three minutes on the timer, took them out, one was pasty, which tells me I should have harvested it yesterday or day before. But I mean, it's so hard to know. I mean, I guess if you have been doing this all your life, you just know, but I mean, you know, the. The silks were dried up. They all looked about the same size. Now, I will say that that corn down there is very crowded. I thinned it twice. What happened on that uh, stand of corn is the first planting, which I did very carefully. I worked very, very hard on that. The first planting, I only got about 15% came up. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know. What happened I have no idea so I didn't wait you know they were this tall and I didn't wait and I came back and I over planted those three rows I mean I put in hundreds of seeds and so hundreds and hundreds of seeds so there would be no doubt that something would come up and I thinned it once and a few days later I thinned it again and I thought that was sufficient but it really wasn't it's, it's very crowded so that's probably why and you know when it's very crowded you better get your body in there and kind of muscle through there and and shake that you know shake that pollen down so i i so back to what i was saying is is i had wanted since i've been here to have a, a little roadside stand out here you know i just thought that would be so cool you know i've never even put up that beautiful late bloomer garden sign that was made by my friend Jack Davis and her husband and and they you know with that machine they carved the letters late bloomer garden I don't want to sit it outside and have it ruined I've seen what's happened to my cedar chairs and swing and everything and my raised beds and oh man the the elements just ruined wooden things so I don't want it outside the whole food preservation thing. You know, my grandparents, uh, one were very poor and the other was, you know, um, it was a small town, so, but, but they were better off because he was a businessman and a gentleman farmer. He had a small dairy. I didn't even know this. I didn't even remember this, but, you know, back during uh, the Depression, well, obviously I don't remember the Depression, <laughs> not that old, but uh, but I don't remember anybody talking about it. I knew that he had a uh, that they had a what I consider to be a fabulous barn. You know, by today's standards, it's nothing. It's just a, a white dairy barn. But but back then, to me, it was just like a, it was just like this magical kingdom. You know, we would go there in the summer, and the whole loft would be full of hay. That you walk in, it smells like hay. And I think they only had like one horse and a mule and 
I mean, it wasn't a, it, they didn't have a lot of space there. But anyway, you know when they have the harvest, they bring it right in and do it that day. So the calendar is cleared and you know when that corn comes in in the um, house, you're going to cut it off the cob and put it in the freezer or can it that day. You're going to get it done. Now my other grandmother, they didn't have refrigeration. Well, they, the other one didn't either. They had an ice house. I think uh, for until they got refrigeration but once refrigeration was available he was a GM dealer so they sold refrigerators so as soon as refrigerators were commercially available they had one meanwhile the other grandparents no so I know it must have been like but she had a bunch of she had a bunch of children so she probably said go harvest the potatoes and bring them in and she would can them you know go you know and or, or maybe she did it I don't know she was a workhorse literally they said my grandmother was um, as good as any man with a mule and a plow and so she could and she had the strongest back and she could go out and pick cotton for you know from light till dark and still come and still and still uh, you know feed I think she was feeding seven let's see her her brother who was mentally very mentally challenged her father or one grandparent and five children and her husband and herself so that's like seven eight nine she had at least nine people to feed every morning and I asked, I asked my mother, I said, Mother, who did the cooking? Oh, she goes, Mother Mother was in charge of the kitchen. The kitchen actually was just a room, a corner of a room where there was also the bed where they slept. And that's also where the baby slept. There was always a baby, you know, since with five, but and then the girls. And so, <laughs> oh, I could go on. But do you go through this in August when you just feel completely overwhelmed and you think, it's such a mess in my kitchen. I can't, I can't possibly make a video. It would take me all day to clean it, <clears throat> to prepare to make a video. And then my, my kitchen is so dark anyway. I don't enjoy filming in there at all. I would really, really love a whole... I wish I had a Danny who could build me <laughs> a canning kitchen like he did for Wanda. Or maybe they already had it. I don't know. I don't know. I know they have a canning kitchen so she can just go in there the counters are all cleaned off and she can just light everything up and, and, and start canning. No, not, not, that's not the case for me. So I'm going to probably juice some more tomatoes today. I may or may not can them. I may drink it fresh. I have been so enjoying this tomato juice. Wow. It's like the first time I've really ever drunk. You know, the only tomato juice I ever had in my entire life was out of a can you know I mean a metal can you know and 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 that was usually V8 you know which had other vegetables in it and a lot of salt I never really drank tomato juice and it's so delicious I got the idea from Daryl he said you know I usually just make juice and uh, and I love the juice steamer so check out that video if you haven't seen it uh, that's one way to go and you can you can get that steamer you know, of course, you can get it through Amazon, and, and you can use my link if you care to support this channel by a few cents. Anyway, I was just wondering how you guys are doing and checking in with you to see how you're doing. I mean, there's so many things happening in the world. Every single day, there's something new. It's either a distraction, a false flag, or real news somewhere buried under there. And we have to discern what it is we have to worry about. <laughs> I think we have to worry about everything. But uh, we have to give it up to God because there's just so much that, that's out of our control. And that's, that's what I have to do. I have to just say, okay, my mission is this, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability, which, frankly, I'm failing. I would give myself, if I had to give myself a grade right now, I would have to give myself on everything. 
I would have to give myself a uh, I think I'd have to give myself a C minus or a D plus and you've seen I've, I've got some good stuff going on here but if you could see what I could see right now and I'm not gonna show you no I'm not gonna show you you say okay C minus is fair all right, I have got to get to work. There's so much to do. I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, just sharing a few thoughts. Pe people say, oh, I want another story time. And I'm going, well, okay. Uh, you know, I got a million stories, but, you know, stopping to focus on, you know, what's helpful to hear, you know, I, I, ju I just want it to be beneficial in some way, not just entertaining. So this you know coming from parents who grandparents both had you know they grew what they ate and probably traded and bartered and I know my grandfather who had the small dairy um, he gave milk to poor people during the depression and I ha there's a picture somewhere of him you know because he was a businessman so he's got his white shirt with his sleeves rolled up and his belt and his trousers and he's got one of those little metal uh, carrying cases for, I, I, I don't know if it was six bottles or four, I can't remember, of milk. And he was delivering it uh, to, you know, to someone in need. And I, I just think that's awesome. That would be what I would love to do. But like I said, this is why I don't have a stand outside is because nothing looks perfect. If you analyze, for example, the vineyard, the vineyard has been harvested and I got two gallon bags of grapes and they're in the refrigerator waiting to be juiced. And I'm thinking, do I just make four jars of jelly or do I just drink that juice fresh and get the, the health benefit from it? But now it's been in the refrigerator four days. It's like, okay, you have got to, you've got to speed up. You've got to speed up. You've got to do more each day. I mean, this morning the alarm went off at 4.45 and I said, oh. No, it went off at 5. I said, oh, let's just change it till 6. It was all fogged in. And I laid there for a minute. I did change it and I laid there for a minute and I went, get up. Get up. You want those cats fed and the litter boxes cleaned out and you want to get down there and get that radio turned off. I still haven't been down there. Because when I, I, what I do is I walk down in my gown at 5.30 in the morning. As soon as it's light, I walk down and I turn that radio off that's been blaring all night. Keep the raccoons out. <laughs> and this morning I walked out and it was dense fog. And it was so dark and I thought, I don't want anything jumping out at me here. <laughs> I don't want to be stepping on a snake or or whatever that happened to my my friend's uh daughter with well, this was at 10 30 at night so it was dark but she she went out from a friend's to her car front yard copperhead bit her twice on the foot they had to airlift her to, to vanderbilt it was touch and go um because in in kentucky where she was they didn't have the the anti-venom Check and see if your local, if you're living in the South, check and see if your local hospital has copperhead and rattlesnake anti-venom. I mean, who would think of that as you're shopping for a property? <laughs> oh man, a dog and cats actually do keep the snake. I mean, I knock on wood. Where's wood? This is wood. I haven't even seen a snake this year and it's already August, so I am thrilled about that um, although I know that certain snakes are are actually good for the garden but you know uh, I just assume you're know, not so anyway I gotta go I gotta go turn off that radio I've got to get harvested I've got the mower coming there's so much to do and there's just not enough of me and I wondered if you're going through that too no matter what size of garden what's what 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 your goals and your aspirations are do you feel like there's just not enough of you to get the, get the job done? Or do you, are you fortunate enough to have family members who can help and, and, and 
and, and get the whole thing done. I, I see all these wonderful channels and they're all working together and they're all getting the work done and I'm just going, oh. I know, it's just not my reality. And I know a lot of people who watch this channel are in the same boat as me. You're on your own, you're trying to do it all. Some of you are still working full time. You haven't retired and so you're, but you're still trying and making that effort. And that's really what we can do, right? We can just, we give it up to the Lord and say, I'm trying to do the best that I can do. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. And, and hopefully at the end of the day, we will be pleasing in his sight. Thank you so much for watching and listening. God bless you. Have a fabulous day. I am going to get going and get some work done.